Welcome to a Perspectives Podcast. This is Joe Sway. Uh, as you guys probably already know, I'm a fellow believer from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I attended the Oral Roberts University, and today I am joined by Mr. Chase Brown himself, a native Texan, attended University of North Texas. He loves long walks on the beach. Why? I have no idea. We we really got to figure that out. Chase, how are you doing, man? No, I am. I'm doing good. Yeah, you still stick into the walks on the beach. I'm sticking to it. But uh, you know what? We'll just we'll roll with it. Okay. I'm doing good though, man. How are you? I'm good. Um, you know, it's a little bit early over here where we are recording this podcast. Uh, I'm really joking. Today we we have a late podcast, which is a little different for us. Hey, but late or it's early exciting, tomorrow, right? Either way, hey, it works out. But yeah. you know, we really appreciate you guys for tuning in to this podcast today. Uh, if you could just do us a quick favor, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, leave yep. us a rating, a review. Uh, and if you enjoyed today's podcast, go check out some of our other episodes with uh, some of our friends like Tadashi and Montel Fish and yeah. everyone else that we really had on there. So, yeah, yeah. Um, But as you guys already know, usually whenever we have a podcast, we try to bring you guys special guests and yeah. influencers and world changers. And um, what are some other big words we can use? Uh, man of many names. Man of many names. Uh, uh, man of many skills. Man of many skills. Professions. Professions. Maybe even say that. Yeah. Uh, an- yeah amateur had me in many names. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Amateur farmer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Indeed. I'm what, what, whatever farmer. your IG bio says. Yeah. Every, <laughs> <laughs> indeed. I'm just going to call him Mr. Mitchell West, Mr. Street Hems. Yeah. Uh, what's good? What's Love good? Love Nindo and, and everything else. Um, <laughs> yeah. How you doing, man? I think the Nindo is just going to be something I do when I'm gaming. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, okay, like, do, okay. like gaming tournaments and stuff we like that. We didn't know you were but, a gamer. This is, this is new. Yeah, man. I just, got that, I just got back from playing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mostly Smash Bros. Okay. But, you know. You know, I'm actually, I'm good, actually, I'm actually okay. signed to a, a gaming company. Yeah, Phenom Gaming. Yeah, Ooh. this dude signed to everything, man. Yeah, we like, to feel like, this is like the third hey, man, thing. You, you give out too much information, bro. <laughs> they don't even know that yet, man. You're, You're signed man. with uh, <laughs> Jesus Culture, <laughs> with Bethel, Hillsong. <laughs> I'm All of them, with bro. The That's awesome. One six movement. Yeah. 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 Is that a reach for it? Nah, 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 nah. Nah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, edit that part the, out. Just the movement. Just the movement. <laughs> oh man, um, bro. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us a. Uh, if someone was to come up to you and say, "Bro, like, what's your story? Like a five minute version of it. Uh, you're coming to Jesus. Uh, tell us where your people from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we kind of get to know a little bit about you before we really dive into a lot of these questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my people, as far as my parents, or your parents, your however generation. you interpret that, yeah, however you want to answer that. Okay, how far back you want to go? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, I am a, a native of the East Coast. Um, my moniker I go by is Street Hymns, doing hymns for the streets because the streets need him. I have done music. Since uh, just about infancy, my, mm-hmm. my, my 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 dad recalls me waking him up at the age of when I was the age of three, and then telling him that Jesus gave me a song, and I shared it with him. Mm. I think around that same time when I was four, um, same similar experience waking him up, and I just hey, I want Jesus in my life, and so I accepted Christ at a young age, uh, as a child, you know, yeah. um, so. That kind of uh, onset a lot of uh, my influence, not only musically, but in the church as well. Mm. So uh, there's a group called Cross Movement. It's like a Christian yep. hip-hop group. They're, 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 you know what I'm saying? The OGs in, this, in, <laughs> oh, yeah. in the game, OGs. man. Um, so Deuce actually used to live with my parents um, before he was even ambassador. So nice. I got to actually grow up and see Christian hip-hop at its foundation, yeah. you know, start. And so like, when I saw it, all that happening, it wasn't about being on stage and and, and, and touring and stuff like that. Cause when nobody what, tried no to have tour, no yeah. Christian rappers yeah, in their no, church, not at all. 
<laughs> so it was literally just grassroots. Like, hey, we on the basketball course. They be mm. a speaker. Fanatics sitting there freestyling for 10 minutes long. Yeah. People like, you're not freestyling. You say, I'm not freestyling, but I'm wilding and I'm doing it for Christ. <laughs> yeah. You going in, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there you go. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I got, I got to see ministry done on the street, you know mm. what I'm saying, at a very, very young age. And that those guys were my role models, man. Mm. Like, I like, man, I'm I'm doing that. I'm gonna do that when I grow up and mm. type thing. And so, like, when I was young, that's all I was gonna do. Like, and so I wrote my first bars at like the age of eleven. And then mm. from there, I just kind of, you know, just kind of yeah. get it. But my dad had me on stage at the age of five. Mm. So he would have me like sing his songs, rap his songs. He had me rap like a version of the books of the Bible he made when I was real, real young. Mm. Um, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Ash, Romans, first and second books, Corinthians. We got Galatians, <laughs> Ephesians, <laughs> Philippians, Galatians, yes. first and second, Thessalonians. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So he, I was I was rapping that yep. joint, man, yeah. and like go around, you know, my, my dad had he had shows, I had a show. And so mm. my dad really did like on set, not just uh music and, 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 and church culture, but also just like theology, man. So mm. that's where my love for theology came from. Yeah, like nice. hearing, oh man, you know, you ain't heard a theological debate until you heard Deuce up at 3 a.m. in the morning mm. talking about, you know what I'm saying, uh, the hypostatic union, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And so like, I'm, I'm, I'm literally like, as a child hearing all this, not knowing what they're talking about, but yeah. seeing the passion and the interest they have for it. Mm. So... That's that section of my like my life and kind of like the foundation of where my art started. Um, I think at this point in time, I would say that where I'm from, based on where my studies land me at now, <laughs> um, I do believe that there is a uh, I'm not gonna say remnant, but I think that. Um, a portion, if not a good majority, of not just um, blacks, but also Africans are um, located and can trace back to Israel. And so mm. I would mm. say Hebrew, you know, but nice. aside from all that, ethnically, um, I think that more than over ethnicity is the fact that I'm foundationally, you know what I'm saying, found in Christ. You know, so that's where my identity lies, you know. So that's, I think, the most important identity marker. But if we're talking about ethnically, mm -hmm. I would say I'm one of the brews. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. even to, uh, <clears throat> I know we're going to want to talk about music and, and all that. But um, so let me give you guys a little bit of background. This is inside information for, oh, for the people listening. Um, I yeah, I ain't dropped my government, man. Yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you almost slipped up with something else. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We won't need to do a lot of editing. No, I'm joking. We'll latest. keep it up. <laughs> no, we had um, back in 2011 and 2012, I'm sitting in my dorm room back at the Oral Roberts University, um, and I'm just browsing YouTube, you know, browsing YouTube. And uh, my friend and I, that was back in the day when Super Hot Fire was doing his thing. <laughs> all them boys were, you know, new, doing their new thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of them were doing their thing. And we stumbled across this Christian rapper. I'm like, a Christian battle rapper? What is that? Yeah. You know? And I'm listening, and I'm like, huh. This man says something about Ezekiel. Right? And he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, you thought and I'd be an easy kill, like the Bible book after Lamentations. Who? <laughs> I remember I was sitting in my dorm like, wait, excuse Jeez. me, what did he just say? And so I showed it to my friend. We were like, we ain't no Christians battle rap. Uh -huh. That was crazy. And so that was the first time I actually seen one of your videos until... That's actually uh, my first book. I, I, that, I thought that was my first battle. Was it? That was Whoa. it. Sparrow. Yeah. It was Sparrow. Yeah, that was my yeah. very first battle. That was it. This was, I'm in Oklahoma. I'm like, who is That's this crazy. guy? <laughs> Bro, I was like a fan. Like I That's didn't even crazy, know, man. man. That's what's up. That's um, what's up. And until a couple years later, when I actually joined uh, in the small group that you were leading, yeah, uh, great small group. You know, such a solid community of people, really just having a lot of those theological questions and going through life together. Mm -hmm. um, so I really got to see you on another level 
Whereas people might just be like, oh, this guy's a Christian artist, but what is he really about? But sitting down and listening to this guy talk and seeing your leadership style, um, you know, it really exposes a lot about what God has already instilled in you. Um, so I just want to put that out there for those of you listening. But Amen. Yeah. Amen. And we really do Bible study more, yeah. bro. We really do. Yeah, it, it's man. real, man. I it's love real. the Bible studies, bro. Because like, this is my, my, uh, I, th- I think I've realized my favorite attribute about God is in his austerity. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I'm always searching and I'm always asking questions. I'm always like, I was the person who always got kicked out of class because I asked too many questions. Mm. I was challenging the teachers. I was challenging, you know what I'm saying, the books. I was, I'm was. i like, why? I get that it says this, but why? Mm. And asking certain questions makes certain people mad. And so the fact that God invites me to search him, mm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Knowing that I'll never fully understand him, yeah. to me, that's a challenge. I'm like, yeah. all right, God, like, we gonna see, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? I know I'm never here, but it's just, yeah. but for me, I'm like, man, like, I'm, I, I'm mentally stimulated at the fact that I'm able to search something that desires to be sought out mm. that I won't be able to figure out. And yeah. I love puzzles. I love, I love, I love mazes. I love, I love being able to search the yeah. unsearchable you know, yeah. Yeah. and find out new knowledge or yeah. hidden knowledge, all that stuff. So, so, so that curiosity goes to other things as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 If you want to talk conspiracies, if you want to talk, um, you know what I'm saying? Anything really, man. I, I just, I love having deep conversations. Yeah. I know that um, it's almost, it's almost like the people that work at the McDonald's, mm most likely not eating McDonald's. Why? Because they know how they make it. Mm-hmm. They know what's going on in the back. And then, so every time you see an advertisement, we only see what they want us to see. Mm-hmm. But the people in the background know what's going on. And so I'm like, if that works for McDonald's, I think that works for everything. And so I'm like, what's going on in the background of everything? And I mm-hmm. need to know what's going on in the background. So yeah. my, 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 my love for knowledge um, actually has made me a stronger believer mm, because nice. I'm like, yo, I'm, I gotta, like, this is, if this is real, then that means there's gotta be some substance behind yeah. it. It's the substance, yeah. as Hebrews says, you know what I'm saying? Faith mm. is, like, there has to be substance. There has to be something foundationally there. Yeah, It's not, it's not just, it's not blind faith. Blind faith is for those who don't have any substance. Mm. But the the faith that we look at in Hebrews is a faith similar to Abraham's where it said he believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness in a time where he could have literally just uh, had the best time in his life with his son before he went up to go kill him. He's Mm -hmm. like, no, let me wake up early in the morning because I know that you told me I was going to have be a father of many nations. This is my only son, even though he had two sons. He said, this is your only son. He honored Isaac because Ishmael was a son of the flesh. So he's like, all right, man, based on this son right here, this is the son I'm going to make nations out of. Mm. You told me to kill him? Bet, Lord. I trust you enough to know either a resurrection is going to happen or a replacement. Mm. He woke up early in the morning. There you go. That's faith. Yeah. Why is faith with a promise? Mm. Faith with a promise has substance. And so we have a faith that has substance. And so when I'm looking at the scriptures, I'm seeing people challenge it. I'm mm. like, ooh. There we are. Let's go. Because yeah. I know, I mean, bro, I, I, I've been dojo. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And the thing is, like, the more I learn, I'm really content in the fact that I don't know a lot. I don't know anything. Mm. The more you start to learn, the more you yeah. start to be humble. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was, I was in Bible college. I graduated Bible college, man. Like, went to Philadelphia Biblical University first. Then I went to... um went and graduated from Dallas Baptist University. Oh, y'all go to DBU. That's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. interesting. But, um, but I, man, I, I remember thinking, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, mean, I know all this theology. Mm. And I realized, man, like, in the midst of all the theology I learned, I learned the most from life and experience mm-hmm. and, un- and understanding what application, the importance of application, the reason as to why when Jesus spoke, he used metaphors of the natural world. Mm. Farmers, seed sowers, you know, he's, he's he like, 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 like people dealing with money. And I'm like, man, like, why did he always use these metaphors? It's like, mm. wait, because that was what the people were trying to hear. Right. Yeah. And so for me, I'm like, all right, I got to get in a place. And I feel like we got to get in a place where we have to keep up with the times and understand that, yes, this is an age old message that will never go old, but ears 
are seeking to hear it in the way that they can digest. Mm. And so how can I communicate this message that will never go old, most important story ever told for sure, how can I communicate this message to the ears inquiring right now? Because mm. the ears inquiring right now, they don't want to hear about no education. They don't want to hear no, they don't want to hear depth. They want to be empathized with this is the age of feeling. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Generation Z, they want to be they want to be heard. They want to know that you felt the same pain I felt. Like when Ravi Zacharias said it best, like the fool says in his heart, there's no God. He gotta, but we're too busy convincing heart, the mind. Mm, yeah. You never see anybody convert, like make a conversion because you beat them in a debate. Mm-hmm. What's conversion? Where's that? Where's conversion start? It starts in the heart, man. So we we too busy, we too busy over educating the church, man. Mm. Like, like it's a lot of dope theologians. There's a lot of dope people that know all that. And I'm like, man, I love theology. Mm. But if people asking me what I encourage people to do, I'm like, man, go love. Mm, go yeah. love people, man. Like, that's the greatest commandment. Yeah. But we too busy trying to focus on teaching. COVID yeah. happens and it's like, oh, snap, how do we keep engaging people? Oh, teach, teach, teach. Like, do you have any pillars there are in the church? It's teaching, <laughs> serving, worshiping, discipling. Yep. But we need to focus on what? Teaching, 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 teaching. We got to get more streams. We got to get more people on the... On the on the on the on the on the I'm like man the viewers list I'm like yo when we gonna keep discipling when we gonna mm. give when we gonna serve you know yeah I think teaching and worship is like overemphasized more more so on the teaching aspect and I'm like man like I feel like we have overly taught under equipped Christians out mm. there yeah. and then like for me because I'm like yo like it it's no surprise that you can be big man you know what I'm saying theologian and you probably seen it too people mm. that graduate from these bible colleges mm-hmm. hit the streets talk to somebody with some hood knowledge some mm-hmm. hood scholars and they're like i never heard that before and then yeah. we see these people convert com- like switching and leaving the faith i'm like mm. dad yo where was your faith like like founded and, and, and foundational right. like if it, if it was easy to be shaken off of being convinced off the mind yeah you know what i'm saying like like it's interesting that the mind is what is causing people to lose faith when it was it's a heart issue. Because hmm. faith, the faith is a gift that's even given in the first place. But yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And I love it because like I, I think I understand why the church can fall into over teaching. Cause in a way, like we know like the truth shall shall set you free mm-hmm. and teach them to obey obey my commandments. Yeah. And but it only goes so far. And I think as humans we're not we fall short in balance a good amount. Yeah. And especially whenever there's several pillars of the church that we need to balance. And mm-hmm. so we overemphasize teaching or baptism or d- yeah. discipleship, whatever. Although I don't know if anyone overemphasizes discipleship. I'll, mm. I'll definitely say hey, that. Man, hey, it's uh, And it's definitely something that like we, we struggle with. And, and it's something that I think, as you pointed out, Whenever someone goes to the streets or goes to have one of those like gospel conversations with people and the way that we format a lot of things in the church now in terms of how we teach or how we digest information, like it's not conducive for that a conversation like that because we just go and almost like lecture people yeah. rather than having it in a conversation and understanding like, Oh, Hey, like people are going to have questions and you're mm-hmm. going to need to deal with them, not just on the level of knowledge or truth or facts, but also on the level of like, Hey, we need to be in relationship and have that relational equity with one another to even have some of these tough conversations. And then from there, love you to where it's like, Hey, like, I don't know the answer to that. So let's pursue the Lord together and figure out what's up. Hmm. And that's not something that we're good with, whether it's, I mean, there's a lot of factors, whether it's our lack of patience, whether it's our often idolization of comfortability, which is something that we talked about a Mm -hmm. lot in our panel conversation. It's, um, it's super interesting and something that, yeah, definitely pursuing that discipleship and some of the other aspects are key things to, to pair that with, the teaching that we've emphasized a lot. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the scripture says, go ye therefore and make teachers. Nah, mm. it says go make disciples. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm like, I'm like, what is it? 
What does it mean to make a disciple? It means to make somebody who's willing to say, follow me, and then start following. If you follow the issue, here's the, here's the thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> mm. You got somebody following you That means they gotta know what's going on with you Yeah And you gotta know who you are Before you start inviting other people in your life Yeah You got you got literally a young dude Looking up to you Looking towards you And then saying Okay how are you And your household When it comes to loving your family How are you in household When it comes to loving your own kids Yeah How are you, when you How are you on the pulpit You know what I'm saying How are you uh, serving How are you And so when they're able to see that and see not only your triumphs, but you're able to clearly and spiritually expose your humanity within all of that. And then they can say, man, okay, but here is a man who loves Yahweh, but also is a man. Yeah. And then they're able to see that. You mean to tell me anybody going through anything, they're not going to think, oh, now I got church hurt. Now I got to lead a church because I saw how flawed they were in the church. Mm. Hospitals for the sick, man. Mm. And I'm like, why are we, this this perception of the 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 celebrity Christian and the, the celebrity person. And so Holier we, we, than now and all that. Yeah, yeah. But, like, but I think a lot of that falls upon ourselves because mm. we don't we're not open enough to say I am a I'm I'm a man you yeah. know what I'm saying that 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 has a contrite heart mm. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a like a uh, uh uh like any any quote from any of the 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 the, the weeping like the weeping people in, in in the scriptures like for me I'm like looking at Paul and him saying like man like like I'm a man of unclean lips uh, or, or or I'm a man of uh uh who said I'm a man of sorrows? Uh, well, Jesus, for sure. But for me, I'm, I'm like I'm like looking at how they describe themselves in their lowest times, and understanding that, all right, man, like I truly do love God, but I'm flawed. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I am. I have this flesh, and it's a constant battle. But when you actually welcome in the aspect that there is a battle, then people can look at you and be gracious. Not expecting a fall, but gracious, knowing that when there is a fall, they're going to experience that same grace. Mm, and I think yeah. that's the beauty in it. Because it wasn't until, you know what I'm saying, I was able to look at my own self that I was able to do things like forgive my loved ones that have hurt me in my immediate family. I was able to look at my role model growing up. My dad had me listening to Ravi Zacharias when I was 10 years old, bro. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm I t- bro, there's not a single Ravi sermon you showed me. I can't, I probably ain't heard. And so I heard what, like the, the, the rumors and the, you know what I'm saying? The allegations that came out yeah. against him. I have no idea how true they are or anything like that. When I heard it, none of my mentality shifted towards his work that he put out. Yeah. Cause I was like, dad, yo. I I was I was I was I was gracious enough to know my own faults and to know where the Lord has saved me to look at that and say, man, okay, but when one of my heroes falls, I have to understand that I wasn't viewing him, I was viewing Christ's righteousness. We put on the full armor of God. You know, it's described in the Old Testament as God's armor. That wasn't a new concept, that was God's armor. And so when I look at the the beauty in man and man and and seeing the righteousness of of what you're doing, I'm seeing the highlights. I'm like, that was Christ I was looking at the whole time. It's not us. Yeah. And so when I see your humanity take precedence, I'm like, ah, I can relate rather than oh, here he goes. Hmm. Now we gotta toss out all that baby bath, ba- bath and the baby. Mm, with the, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ba- bath yeah. water the and the baby. The water, yeah. And so for me, I'm like, all right, bet. Um, and I think discipleship is scary because you have to invite people into your life. Mm. So I, I, th- I think that we, as a body, should get to a place of, all right, I know that the way I look on social media ain't always the truth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and and what does it mean to not to not be fake? I don't nobody wants to be fake. You know what I'm saying? Because like at the end of the day, like like we talk about how you appear to your youth group or how you appear to your job, how you appear to for me, I'm like, all right, 
how do we appear before God? Mm. I think that once we get to that place, it's just like, once you understand how you appear before God and how you know he under, and understands that he loves you and he meets you in the mess, I'm like, man, Lord, thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and, <laughs> and viewing you. it through that perspective, because something that I was just thinking about was like, we, because we talked about social media, we talked about some of these factors that cause us to not want to be vulnerable and not trust people mm-hmm. and, and be filled with humility. And I was kind of thinking about it, I was just like, well, and, and I'm, I may be totally wrong with this, but I feel like Americans aren't the only culture that struggle with it. Mm-hmm. I think we may uniquely because we place this pressure correctly or incorrectly on ourselves that we're like the role models of the world for some reason (laughs) whether that's like the church in america whether that's america in general and so we may place like added pressure onto ourselves but still from there like in other cultures they kind of have the same struggles and so i'm wondering like what goes into that of Mm -hmm. like why do we as humans just struggle with trust and vulnerability and that Like even I'm sure with Paul and others encouraging churches to be vulnerable and be bold and and be humble, that it's something that even back then they struggled with. And Mm -hmm. so it's, it's just interesting to me and like not expecting an answer, but it's just kind of like a thought that I have just like, man, like why do we struggle? And maybe it's just not viewing ourselves, our identity and others through the Lord's perspective. Um, Well, here's the thing. So it's, if you look at it from the point of view of, man, let's say I, at a young age, I was, you know, in this crowd, I made a lot of terrible mistakes that nobody's ever known. And I come to a church and the first thing, the first time I bring it up, all of a sudden, the same people that used to give me hugs, don't want to give me hugs no more. Mm. You know what I'm saying? What does that do? It causes an individual to close their hearts. Yeah. And right? this, this is a question that I pose, right? The Bible says in Second Corinthians chapter 5 that, Therefore, in Christ, we no longer regard someone according to the flesh, right? Wow. If in our churches, somebody comes in and says, hey, you know, I've been convicted of, you know, okay, let me not, let me not go there. I don't want to be too aggressive, but I feel like for the sake Say of theft. my- Say theft. Theft, yeah. right? Something really crazy. Um, truly in our hearts, do we still look at that person the same way? Or is that a thing that always comes- in your mind, because all of a sudden, you know, uh, whenever he's around, you're locking things, you know, you're making sure that things are secure. Yeah. You're making sure that this, this, and this is put in order, even though that might not be who he is anymore, but you're like, in your mind, you're like, you know, I'm just, I just want to be safe, right? So I don't, I don't know if we, as, as people ever really come to a place where we really truly see people redeemed, right? We still yeah. see you because of your past mistakes, I still see you because the, the the term is what? What's a cheater? I was a cheater, right? Even yeah. in the church, somebody might have never cheated for 50 years. But remember that one time he cheated, he still yeah. had a cheater, right? Yeah. So we have that mentality about people on various levels. So it's kind of hard to for me to be so open and then for the fear of, you know, being accepted. And maybe this is right? a part of it that we trust our rationality more than trusting God's commandments and the spirit to be able to move in our obedience Mm. because it's something that like maybe from like a, what would be the proper term from like an evolutionary perspective? Like maybe, maybe it would be proper from that perspective to like not trust someone if they steal because for the good of you and your family, it's just like, Oh, I don't want to trust them because I want to keep my family going. Mm -hmm. But since that's not our worldview and the Bible yeah, we're, we're counter, has a different counter material, counter yeah. cultural. And so from there, it's just like that should kind of go against that whenever we're pursuing biblical commandments. So mm. yeah, that's interesting. I did have a question for you though. I know it's not something that was on our you know outline or anything, but you did say, and it was something I, I talked with somebody recently about the uh, church hurts. Um, talk to me a little bit, or talk to us, not just me, a little, talk to us about it. Because sometimes I just, I'm like, why are all these people hurt by the church? I oh, understand they there are expectations. There are always, yeah. there are some, some, some situations are valid in our eyes. And then some of them I'm like, hmm, you know, so. 
Well, here's here's the thing. I, this and this and this is the this is the interesting part. All church hurt is valid. Mm. That's the, okay. Now let me let me break it. It sounds weird, but all church hurt is valid. Like as much as their perspective can get in the way mm. of the truth, the effect of what happened having an impact on their heart mm-hmm. is still valid. Mm-hmm. You never want to invalidate somebody's hurt. For sure. Because if a three-year-old child, you know what I'm saying, comes through and, 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 and punches me, all the force he can get, and I'm mm-hmm. like, <laughs> what you doing, man? Yeah. You like, yeah. punch on your buns. Mm-hmm. And then he does the same thing to another child. Same exact thing. Impact, same exact force, same exact, but the child's hurting. Mm. Now, that was a light blow, but light is subjective. No. Strong is subjective. Mm. If you had a weakness of faith beforehand and something's, it's like, wait, you mean to tell me your church hurt because you didn't get first chair in a choir? Mm. Yeah. What? And then now they search for everything. Oh, there's contradictions in the Bible. Oh, you know that the pastor's mm. doing this. All oh, the praise team members was doing this anyways. You know, and but really it was drawn back to ah, oh, wait a minute. You wasn't getting love at home. Mm. And then you looked at the church director as somebody who was finally giving you that affirmation you were seeking this entire time. And you thought you had this relationship. You was putting in the work, and next thing you know, you didn't get the first, and now you feel like, man. God must not want me. Mm. And so like we have to we have to be able to draw back and say this is bigger than just uh when something happens this is how it should affect everyone. No. The church is a group of individuals. Mm. And we have to look at every single case individually. The, the I think what's going on is we're reading these books, we're seeing these these videos, reading these, listen to podcasts and stuff like that. And then we're hearing, okay, this is how it's done. This is how we should address this. And it's like, that may work hmm. on a general scale. But God wasn't a general God. No. He met individuals where they were at. Hmm. He'd be in the crowd and next thing you know, he'd feel, who just touched my garment? Hmm. No. Stop for that one person. It's a lot of hurt going on. Yeah. But God will say, I'm going to meet you specifically where you're at. Mm-hmm. And so, when it comes to church hurt, I think that 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 we have to do a job of recognizing that whatever that person says from that moment on, listen. Hmm. Listen. You'll hear a common theme. Because literally, I kid you not, there's been rare cases where somebody's talking about the contradictions of the Bible and how things is going on. And I literally just say, Let me, can, what I do is I, I literally go and say, can you share them? Oh, I don't got them on me right now. And they start sharing some memes and stuff like that, mm. or a, a picture. I'm like, interesting, interesting. You know, I've seen that before. <laughs> and from there, I asked the question, like, man, so where do you stand with God? Like, mm. like in a, and then you start hearing things. And then when the answer of where they stand with God is responsive to what happened with man, mm-hmm. that just shows you yeah. what they saying is valid. Cause what? We're called to live a life of. Y'all are called to live this. You weren't doing that. You was doing this. What are you supposed to say? No, nah, but you got to understand. No, no, no. You're right. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you, have, you have a misinterpretation of grace, mm. which defies the standard of evolution, which defies the standard of, 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 of the court of law. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, 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 yes, based on that perspective, I see where you're getting that. So I'm going to sit here and listen. And then in my best way, exemplify love mm. in the midst of the nonsense. Mm-hmm. And so I think, I, think, I think when it comes to church hurt, and my simple answer is, yes, it's real. Yes, it's always real. And we have to address it individually. Let me, let me follow up with that. I agree with you. Um, and so I'm thinking about scripture you know, it says for us to bear with one another in love. Why? Because mm-hmm. things like this are going to happen. Another place says, forgive one another just as Christ Jesus, Jesus mm-hmm. forgave you. Mm-hmm. So if I'm, as a believer, as a disciple, I am walking with, you know, all these chairs, all these group of believers, and you heard me in a church, let's say you didn't give me that first seat, 
is my response as a believer then to leave because of the hurt or to say, I need to respond in love. I need to forgive you the same way that Christ forgave me. Because for me, that's kind of where the disconnect is. Oh, yeah. Because, yes, oh, yeah. what happens to you is definitely valid, but you're still called to bear with one another in love. You're still called to, you know, um, that other verse I just quoted, I can't remember right now, um, you know, to forgive, forgive one another. As yeah, a crisis yeah. So, so for me, that's kind of where I'm like, but where, at what point does do those things come in versus I'm hurt, I'm offended, so let me leave. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I think they come in at every point. It's just when, like I said, like it when when the issue is of issue of flesh and blood, that just shows me that you're battling God. You're wrestling with God. When when I can address spiritual things and your thing is, well, man did this. Ah, your issues, you're you're wrestling, man, when really you're having to wrestle with God. Hmm. You have to wrestle with God. You have to wrestle. This is a sp- spiritual warfare. And so when the default of what's supposed to be done isn't happening, mm. I'm recognizing it on a level of, ah, okay, this is bigger than you. This is bigger than me. And so anything I say from here on out that is like quoting the scriptures that you grew up hearing and 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 going and showing you the podcast and letting you listen to music and all this stuff, it's like I could send you all the information in the mind, but I never touch the heart. And so what we have to do is not neglect the mind, but appeal to the heart. And how do you appeal to the heart? Relationships. Mm. Loving that person when they leave. What does that look like? You mean to tell me that if somebody that was hurt by this place was able to see you and say, man, why are you different? Mm. Like, Maybe I'm not different. Maybe you have a different perspective. Mm. But know that if I'm willing to come and meet you in your mess, I'm being like Christ. Mm. And that's the best thing you can do for somebody Mm. who is in a place of wandering, in a place of leaving, in a place of rejection, in a place of hurt, anything. Meeting them in their mess. That was, bro, That this this has literally been a theme of the last three weeks. Because I'm talking about after seeing... uh, so reading, 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 reading through, reading through the, the gospels and seeing how Peter denies Jesus three times, you know, y'all probably heard the sermon preached a million times, but just the aspect of the three and the three, he denies three times and then Jesus meets him. And then he says three times, do you love me? Mm-hmm. You know, and the dope significance in that is not so much that you know, he he ends up leaving and then going back to what he knows best, fishing. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and then Jesus meets him there. But I think the dopest aspect that hits me and where I'm at in this season is the fact that he was at his lowest, literally at his lowest. In the moment where the thief who ends up getting exposed in church, mm. do you know how bad Peter would have got canceled in the church right mm-hmm. now? You mean to tell me you're a backstabbing racist? Mm. Woo! <laughs> 2020 wouldn't have that. Mm-hmm. The dude hated Gentiles and he turned on his homie? Mm. The son of God? Yeah. It's yeah. a wrap for Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have got all types of cancel culture letters, yeah. all types yeah. of cancel culture tweets. He would have been exiled from the church. Mm. Oh, you can't turn on the Savior. You turn on the Savior? Wow. Da, 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 da. Come on, dog. And so... Imagine the emotional depression this man had to be in. Mm. And he's like, well, let me go back to what I know. Whether that's your job, whether that's your sin issues, whether that's your addictions, whether that's abuse, whether you're hurt, whatever it may be. And he's there. And then God meets him there. (laughs) He says, do you love me? And the response afterwards is the key. Because Peter's like, I love you. Tend my flock. Do you love me? You know I love you. Take care of my sheep. While you down there in the lowest point of your life, cool. Pick some of them ones up because they know how you feel. That's the empathy piece. It's like, at your lowest, 
somebody else is there. So you might as well do some work while you're down there. Mm. And that is the aspect of understanding that in the shame there is humility. In the humility, there is a gauge and a sight to say, man, I don't really got it all figured out. Mm. Man, this is where you love me. Mm. In my mess? You met me in my mess? And then in the mess, he tells you, you better work. Take care of my sheep because my sheep are as dirty as you are right mm. now. Yeah. And they'll look at you and say, wait, you telling me that I need help? Yeah. Because in the midst of my mess, knowing I'm dirty, looking at you and seeing the same, I'm like, man, I'm still being loved. Mm. That's what will hit them. Because it's like, wait, wait, you're experiencing love in this? Yeah. <laughs> and it is relieving to know that there's an almighty, all loving creator that desires a relationship with you in the midst of your wandering. And I feel like that church hurt piece is just something that just says, all right, man, I don't have it all figured out. I don't, I don't know. I don't like this place. Mm. I don't like these people. I don't like this God. Whatever that may be for them. I think if we can look at that and say, all right, bet. They don't need the holier than now version of me. Yeah. They don't need the scripture every day. I'm about to t- tweet and then have like basically subtweet you when I'm doing this and 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 make sure you see this. And, and it's like, no, nah, they need you to be consistent, be loving, and meet them where they're at and they're hurt and their yeah. pain. Empathize, sympathize, pray for them when they're not in your presence. Mm-hmm. Loving them, man. Greatest commandment, love. That's mm. that's I, f- I feel like that's the response, man. Just yeah. love. Yeah, and I love it because I think especially in 2020, whenever things have been in a way so heated yeah. or so tension filled, it'll be something where that can resonate yeah. with a lot of people. And for those of us who are in the church, it is super helpful, even if we're not walking with someone right now who's dealing with church hurt. Like mm. we will eventually. Yeah. And so it's good for us to learn and for the Lord to like prepare us mm-hmm. for that season. And so kind of, I, I loved the tangent. Mm. Yeah. Definitely I see that. I'm pretty sure yeah. we haven't talked any topics. We're supposed to. Uh, <laughs> hey man. Yeah. Other than the introduction. We, 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 we right there. Loved yeah. it. Honestly, that was loved great. It. That was great. Uh, so, so kind of, so kind of going back to it. Um, battle rap. Yeah, Indeed. when yeah. did you get into that? What the heck is battle rap like? Mm-hmm. And Jeez. what has gone do- what has God done in your relationship with him like through just, that? Just wait, did you come to a battle? Huh? Did you actually come to one? Or not yet, you missed not yet. it. Okay, not okay, yet, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, so I got into battle rap because I was curious and I knew I was gonna so it was years ago. I was working on my project. Uh it might have been my look both ways project which came out in like 2011. Okay. And uh, in the midst of me working on that project, I was at Dylan Chase's house, great servant of the Lord, one of my favorite father figures. Uh, yeah, I just, I, that's a role model for sure. Love everything he does. Love how he loves his family. Love how he loves his church, his community, everything. And so I was over his house. He's real welcoming when it comes to like having people over and recording. He's just like, once you experience his household, and I love mm-hmm. that about him. <laughs> And then um, while I was with him, I was like, man, I think I'm a battle rap. He was like, what's that look like? I said, I have no idea. I didn't. <laughs> I just knew I was going to do it. And so that was like six years before I even stepped in the ring. Hmm. And so when it came to the opportunity and the opportunity presented itself in Dallas, I tried out for the league and I ended up doing that Sparrow battle that you mm-hmm. talked about. Yeah. Um, but the step that I took forth was off of a trailblazer. His name is The Saga. Saga is also a, a Christian hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, a battler. And so when I saw Saga doing it, he battled a dude named Black Mugga on what was called a PG, the Proving Grounds. It's like when you, the, the battle you take before you get to the next level on the big platform, right? And so he's battling that dude on the PG. And I'm like, wait, this is a Christian rapper. He's going in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, whew. And so I was like, man, this is what it looks like. And so I was inspired. Off that inspiration, you know, I felt called in that moment to finally take the steps towards it. I had him taking the steps and, you know, 
from there, the rest is history, man. Just just end up seeing a lot of favor and all that, man. So it was just dope, you know, being able to 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 to, to represent Christ, but also exemplify, you know, what it means that to really be a part of the hip hop culture. Mm. You know, love bars, love lyricism, love metaphors, love performance, all that, you know, and just exemplify, you know, God conquering. That's what mm. I feel like. That's what I feel like. That's what battle rap does, and so. It's an intense culture, man. It's an intense culture. Hmm. Um, everyone always tells me, man, I could never battle rap. I say, don't do it then. <laughs> like, like you just snitched on yourself. If I ever see you in the ring, I'm like, nope, get him out of here. Because, yeah. you know, people going to talk about, you know, it's it, it, it. people rarely spare any words, mm-hmm. you know, if they don't respect you. And sometimes they will respect you, but, they'll, you know, when you get in the ring, it's just like, you know, anything, all's fair. So... Um, they'll mention dead family members. They'll mention, you know, doing things to your mother. They'll mention doing things mm. to your sister. They'll mention doing things to the church members, whatever it may be, you know, whatever gets on the edge. And so for me, um, knowing the intensity behind the culture and also understanding the culture, I'm able to filter things, you know. So uh, one of the things I say is you should never judge a culture from the outside. If you're not willing to be a part of it, just don't speak on it, mm-hmm. you know, because at the end of the day, people seen what I was doing. And when I first started battling, mm-hmm. I'm talking about like battling, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and having people show up and having people, you know, people go post me afterwards. Like, yo, this Christian dude. Da, da, da. <laughs> I had people DMing me. I had people, yo, this is not of the Lord. Mm. Yo, this is, this is, this is, this is sinful. How can you be in a place where there's a stripper pole behind you? Yo, they're drinking, they're smoking, they're... I'm like, wow. Mm. <laughs> Did y'all not forget there was a character named Jesus in the Bible? Mm, yep. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure he did. But, went, um, went to some pretty rough places. Yeah, friend of sinners, man. So, uh, like, we hear about being a friend of sinners, but we got, like, we got to actually be willing to be that. Mm, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I think believers got too many believing friends. Mm. You know, yep. so it's time, to, it's, time to, it's time to be the ek. In Ecclesia. Mm. Uh, but so in the midst of all that, I think that battle rap has been something that has taught me the continued importance in uh, how you present yourself and what you do behind closed doors and understanding that people are always watching, mm. understanding that people are always needing, you know? And it's crazy because the times when I was reached out to to pray. The times that I was reached out to to uh, to, to give to somebody. The times I was reached out to to serve somebody. The times it's probably my most sinful times. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, dag, yo, Lord, you want me to you want me to go all out for, for like you know what I'm saying? People, I don't, I don't feel the energy. I don't feel the high. I don't feel like the 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 moment of people praising and worshiping hmm. while I'm on stage and seeing what I'm doing and. I'm I'm not feeling the I don't feel like I'm I'm, I'm spirit filled at this moment because you meet me at my lowest and it's like yeah I need I need to use you real quick because this person needs a word I'm like dang that's crazy <laughs> but if 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 Elijah the Lord's prophet can be fed from the mouth of a sparrow you know what I'm saying or the mouth of a raven you know if he can get fed morsels from the mouth of a raven then God can use us hmm. you know what I'm saying yeah. that's either voluntarily. Or involuntary, <laughs> you know, prefer to voluntary, and so it's 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 been a, it's been a humbling experience, man. It's it's humbling if anything, yeah. And so for me, as as the years progress, you know, it it became about performance. It became about you know being the best. It became, but I was like, now I'm in a place. I'm just like lower. Like if I lost every battle from here on out, but somebody was intrigued enough to hit me up and say, man, I really do want to Bible study more. I'm winning. You're good. Yeah. I'm good. Like I, I, I truly am in that place, man. Cause mm. um, I never really desired to like, you know what I'm saying? Be the top battler. I always just desired to be one of the top writers in battle rap, mm-hmm. you know? So even my aspirations have a cap off, you know what I'm saying? To the average person. It's like, Oh, well you'll never be number one battler in the world. If you, yeah, I never really care. My favorite rapper is Lupe Fiasco. So mm, you kind of yeah, gauge yeah. where, you know what I'm saying? My yeah. mind mentally works. So I'm like, I just want to be a writer. Mm. So as I just started gauging things and trying to taking a step back and thinking, all right, in the midst of everything that's happened, you know, what, what have we gained? You know, um, 
in the aspect of souls and aspect of the kingdom, like what, what work has been done. And man, there's, there's fruit, there's fruit. And, but in the midst of the fruit, you always feel like you can do more, hmm. you know? And so for me, I think that the, the public downside of battle rap, and this is what I'll say. The public downside of battle rap is because it's such a culture that is vulgar, mm-hmm. it's such a culture that they're, we're almost invited to their environment. Mm-hmm. And so the things that they record, the, the interviews, the people that you see, the, the highlights of battle rap, you search battle rap, it's going to be something vulgar. And it's like, you know, then you look at us and it's like, where do y'all fit in again? Yeah. And so in the midst of all that, the last thing I want to do is, oh, y'all don't understand. So and so that got a certain the verified check was hitting me up last night talking about he wanted to commit suicide. Mm. Other this person hit me up the other night talking about, man, like, like, like I fell away from the faith, but y'all have encouraged me. This mm. person hit me up and said, Man, like, I want to go and encourage the youth like you're doing. So I joined my church. And this person, we don't want to do that for the gold star. So people don't really get to see that. Cause for us, it's the moment we start highlighting our spiritual trophies within mm. this culture, they start to feel like a project. And the moment they start feeling like a project, it becomes disingenuous. Mm. And so for us, it's just like, we're content knowing that the Lord is satisfied with the work, even if man isn't, you know? So mm. that's a, that was a tough place to be at. Cause I'm like, man, like I, I'm really, I feel like I, I, I really try to do the best job I can to make sure I love the brethren first. Mm-hmm. You'll never hear me bashing the church. I challenge the church because that's what I do with everything in life and everything. I challenge myself. I challenge my friends. Like, I'm just a challenger. Like, I, I love conflict. I truly just love conflict. You know what I'm saying? And so if there's not conflict happening, I'm like, okay, how strong is our friendship? You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I try to, I try mm-hmm. to make sure there's something that goes on because I'm like, yo, we, there's no way we all, do, we all agree with anything, you know what I'm saying? Like we have to, we have to be able to understand that I can disagree with you completely and still love you. Mm. I can know that there's not everything on the same, you know what I'm saying? We can, we, we don't have to be on the same mind, but we can be on the same wavelength, mm. you know? And so um, we can be in the same heart. And I feel like that's the call he has us to. He doesn't ask us to be in one mind. We have the mind of Christ, but he has us to be in one heart. You know what I'm saying? The oneness is, is, is understanding the call and the foundation of the kingdom. And so in the midst of all that, I feel like, I came to a place of I don't have to be agreed with with everyone. And if my church family, if my family, or if my community isn't calling me out, I don't feel like I'm doing something at all. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm pretty sure if I got challenged, like the times I do get challenged because it's, it's, it's I say rare, but social media, stuff like that, hey, you posting this, you posting this. People are like, hey, man, you think you should post that down? I don't even think twice. Cause I'm like, bet, you know my heart, you know where I stand with things. If you're saying that this is gonna jeopardize something in the, for the greater call, I feel you. I'm, I'm, I don't even second guess it. Yeah. Cause it's just like, oh yeah, I won't get a thousand likes on this, even though it's a good picture. Cool, whatever. I ain't tripping off the likes. But when people in the comment section, <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Eh. Yeah, oh, the comment section. Yeah, so <laughs> no, I mean, that's actually a good point because the thought uh, as you were speaking, um, which is actually, um, how do how do you deal with the um, what I guess would be called platform, you know, in light of you know you being somebody that um, you know through your battles, obviously people watch it. You know, you're getting all these views. Uh, like you said, people are reaching out to you. Um, how do you balance all of that? Right, because it's, it's easy for us as humans. Whenever you're getting what we call fame, attention, oh, yeah. accolades, to kind of like, oh man, I got to do this even more, so so I can get more. How do you balance all of that and having some kind of relationship with Jesus that's genuine and not just something you're doing for your newfound quote unquote fans, right? Because you, we want to live before the one, right, uh, and not just for. Oh man, that that yeah. balance is something that I have a constant struggle with, but. The Lord does a great job of reminding me, mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, how to how to, how to humble me, you know. And I, I really do feel like, you know, the, the 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 scripture about put thorn bushes in my path so I don't need desire to stray. Like, like allow me going the wrong way to hurt mm. so I can know what it feels like to walk in the right path of the righteous. So it's like knowing that 
yeah, like man, fame is fame is addicting. Fame mm. is it feels good. And you know, I'm not even I don't even got that many followers, but the the moment of like being acknowledged, I'm a words of affirmation person too. So I'm like, yeah, tell me how good I am. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But like in the midst of all that, like, like that's a that's not a, not just not only a desire, but it's something I actually need in order to understand, like, man, like Am, am I doing good? You know what I'm saying? And, mm. and, but but that also can be used as negative. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. in the midst of all that, I feel like every person who has experienced this level of and this this platform rising, it's just like, don't forget, this ain't about you. Mm. And uh, uh, man, so uh, man, in my most <laughs> recent battle, uh, I battled somebody named Lou Cipher, mm-hmm. crazy lyricist, fire dude, man. Um, may release, I don't know if it's gonna release or not, but uh, it was on Twitch through a platform called King of the Dot, and I, I mentioned like I did like a little sermonette in my third round. Everyone said I lost that round. I was like, when I wrote it, I was like, I'm gonna lose this round, but. I feel like what I said had to be said. And I basically talked about, because like I said, his name is Lucifer, which is basically Lucifer, yeah. spelled it out, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I basically mentioned how the name of Jesus isn't what people are really trying to vibe with. A lot of people are just coming to God for what he can offer. And I was like... Um, I said he had people following him, seeing signs and wonders and wasn't claiming Jesus because they didn't care about the name of Jesus, just the benefits that came from Jesus. So what you gain from Jesus, is it miracles, material things, or fame from Jesus? That's crazy because on a mountain, the devil offered the same to Jesus. Hmm. And I'm like, as I was reading the scriptures, I'm like, Dad, yo, like, people are really leaving, coming to off of the same things that God himself was being tempted with. Mm. I'm like, dang. Yeah. And so how important must fame be? Mm. How important must material things be? How important must these signs and wonders be? When he's like, blessed are those who can see without mm. having yeah, to all that. touch it. and have, like, like the experience you have in the pure faith of a child. Believe in it just because you said it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and knowing that, man, you love me, Father, so I know I can trust what you said. Mm. And that's the faith of a child. And then knowing that material things may not go there. And I'm like, man, like, like, I feel like one of my jobs right now is to free the church of working for man. Because mm. too, many, too many people work for man. And Here's how you know if you work for man. If you got fired today and you said, I don't know what I'm going to do, you work for man. Because Mm -hmm. man is now your provision. Mm -hmm. If you feel like Yahweh is your provision, no matter what's going on, you know you'll be provided for. If you can lose everything and say, I don't know how I will be provided for, you work for man. The scriptures say work wholeheartedly as unto God and not unto man. There's too many people working nine to fives, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the corporate world, even in the church, getting tempted with a 30%, 30 cent raise and getting tempted with a higher position and getting tempted with all these things. You wait years and years and years and stall your calling. You're stalling on the calling because you got something, a higher position coming and higher this, higher this, higher this, higher, 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 higher. And you want to get hired and hired and hired and hired. When God is saying, I'm your CEO and you have an unlimited favor, what greater currency is there than favor? Because what does God desire for us? What does God, the church coming together, lacking in nothing. Mm. If you could have all your needs provided for, what would you do? And so what, how important really is these material things? Mm -hmm. Mm. So we look at fame and material things and signs and what I'm like, all right, Lord, I got some things wrong. 
in my theology. I got some things wrong in my education. I got some things wrong in my heart. I'm looking at these things. I'm trying to be fulfilled. I'm trying to be. And in the Lord, you were strong enough to trust the Father to say, yeah, man, man's not going to live on every, just, just, just bread, but the word that proceeds from the, 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 the Lord, every word that proceeds from the Lord, not just bread alone. Understanding that every temptation he responded with scripture, understanding that like, no matter how much we look at that and say, oh, Jesus did a great job. It's like, no, he was tempted. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, I can relate, but I can also overcome because the spirit lives in me. Yeah. So I think that in this place, I I, I just want to encourage the church, you know what I'm saying? Like, like be strong, be courageous, be foundationally in Christ, meaning Christ had a human side as well. And he felt the same things we felt, but him fulfilling the law, you know what I'm saying, is a perfect presentation of what it means to, to exemplify love. And so in the moments where I'm challenged by the church, I'm like, man, this isn't about you and me. This isn't about, like you're looking at me thinking there's a battle between me. But I'm just, I'm so used to Christians battling Christians, man. I'm tired of it. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, like, I love theological debates. You know that. Like, mm-hmm. well, Bible study, we leave Bible study afterwards, like 1030, you know what I'm saying, sometimes 12, because <laughs> we're talking afterwards. Yep. I love it. But when I see believers, like, when I went to Bible college, the amount of times I realized I debated Calvinism and Arminianism, mm. I'm like, hours and hours, yeah. days, weeks, and it was just the same conversation. Is it productive? Yeah. No, no, no. It's all productive. Okay. Because because the thing is, the Lord really does enjoy when iron sharpens iron. Mm, okay. But 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 what's the purpose of the iron being sharpened if you're never using it? Yeah. We're only sharpening each other. And it's like, no, we need more iron. <laughs> go yeah, go nice. get more iron. And so I'm like, I like I, I still encourage theological debate. I still encourage the 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 back and forths, the powwows, the the the, the sessions, the all I, I I encourage it. I'm not here to bash the church. I'm just like, yo, there is a bigger picture though. What was the purpose and the call of all this to go and make disciples? And disciples weren't just disciples of believers. We're called to have followers who are following us that don't got it all right. Mm. That's the weird part. When I'm looking at Acts, I'm seeing uh, Simon the Magician in the midst. Mm. He's like, yo, we doing miracles? <laughs> Let me buy that. <laughs> he gets rebuked. Mm. You think Simon had it all together? No, he's, but he's a man. Like, obviously, I, I, th- I, think, I think he ended up having some type of faith, but... He was, they were calling all people, you know what I'm saying? Being, being baptized, being, and not all of them were saved. Cause at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Like, obviously people, some people probably just there for the ride. You know what I'm saying? But some people, there wasn't only just one Judas, but our job isn't to sit there and be like, oh, well, you're not really living this. You got to go. It's like, no, in the midst of all the followers, I'm going to keep sharpening you. And as you around me, you're going to get sharp. Hmm. And so for me, I'm like, I'm like, all right, Lord, like, how can I go and sharpen the world? Because I'm I'm tired of sharpening my like, like just 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 us. I love sharpening us because I love getting sharpened. Talking to people I'm talking to, having the conversation I'm I'm having, it's like, yeah, I love it. But I'm like, at some point in time, man, we got to go out. Like the church was supposed to be an organism, and we're not stirring the pot. We're just in one spot, and because of that, I'm like, man, like. I don't think we're actually being able to experience love and grace. Cause when you understand that, like in the midst of all the knowledge, you know, if you meet the right person is just more knowledgeable than you. And you're just like, wow, is the answer now I have to go and study more about this, about what I know, or I got to go study more about what the world knows. Paul was well-versed in philosophy, ethics, morality, cause he studied the world. You have to know the world. Know your, know your quote-unquote enemy would be the, the worldly way to say it, but 
knowing the enemy and knowing that the enemy is involved in the world of people. And so because people are there, we have to study people. I'm like, man, like when we understand it, there's a lot more connections here that we have that, that are there and exist rather than just disagreements and rather than just negative aspects. Bet we can say you're calling it karma. You're calling it the law of attraction. You're calling it the secret. My scriptures call it reaping and sowing. My scriptures calling it um, life and death is in the power of the tongue. I can see where we relate. You just don't have a source. You credit it to the universe. <laughs> I credit it to the creator of the universe. So now does this mean we have to go our separate ways or it just means, hey, let's keep in relationship, you know? And so in the midst of all that, I, I feel like, you know, um, I definitely, like I said, loving the church is the first step and I love them through it, you know? I don't always do it in the closest proximity because it's yeah. like, I'm not, it's only going to be so much of you telling me I'm, I'm doing the wrong thing and me knowing that the Lord's called me to do this, I'm keep you around like that. But for me, it's, it's, it's really just understanding that yeah, you you're just you you have a you have a misconstrued perspective of battle, yeah. you know. So and and that that's a double entendre. So. <laughs> Love it, um, awesome. Well, something that God and probably battle rap along with like your normal music that you put out, something that those gave you the opportunity to go to do was go over to Israel mm -hmm. with them boys, Israel Collective. Absolutely. And we've talked about Israel Collective and Israel with a couple people, um, Tadashi, Tony Tillman, some yeah, people have gotten yeah. to go over. That group, and, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so wanted to give you the opportunity, since we're kind of a travel podcast, mm -hmm. one of the components, Yeah. Uh, just kind of share how, how was that trip? What was some things that God was like walking you through on that trip? And just in general, like encouraging people to just kind of travel, get out of their comfort zones, everything like that, and how that's encouraged or inspired you as a musician and yeah. as an artist. Man, so I'll say this much, man. I didn't realize how much I said I was going to travel the world until I actually did. And I was like, hmm. ah, this was just, we say it so much as a concept. But it's like, do we actually say, okay, I'm going to budget out for this and I'm and I'm, and I'm, and I'm doing it. I'm going to go get a passport. I'm going to end up doing it. I'm going to, you know, when, when, when you don't want to do anything like enough, you'll find a way to make it happen. And so I realized I really didn't want to travel the world. I was comfortable, you know. And here comes Grant Skeldon telling me, hey, you want to go to Israel? <laughs> I'm like, for real? He's like, yeah. I was like, man, I don't got the money. He's like, bro, it don't cost you nothing. Just, just go there and get your passport. And they got you. I'm like, Word. <laughs> so I had them doing it. And so what's crazy is I did my application late to where they didn't even accept me. They said, like, oh, man, you got to get next year. And I wrote a letter to the lady. I said, look here. <laughs> I don't got my passport. I don't got, like, the, 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 the deadline. I don't got it. I said, but I'm going on this trip. And I said, I don't know how I'm going to make it happen financially, but it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not, look, I, I'm usually not like that, that mm -hmm. like that that type of confidence. And it wasn't like I was demanding. I was polite. This, I, I'm pretty sure if I, re, if I reviewed it, it'd be like it'd be more welcoming. But yeah. um, she responded. She's like, "Praise God, you got a spot." And I'm like, "All right, bet." So hey. you know what I'm saying. And I ended up getting my passport. You know, everybody was telling me, "You're not getting a passport. You can't get a passport two weeks for." It. I'm like. My passport came really fast. Yeah, no. the whole time yeah. I legit did not stress a thing. I said, "Yo, the <laughs> Lord." I remember I was in the Bible study. They were like, mm. "We doing prayer requests and praise reports." Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, "Y'all pray for me to get his passport." I said, I said, <laughs> yo, "I said, yo, I'm not stressing off this. Mm. I'm gonna get my passport because I'm going to Israel." It's like, "You're not gonna go to Israel if you don't get." It. I'm like, Shh, sh, sh, sh. "Yeah, it's all I'll take." <laughs> now you know what I'm saying. I, I was hey, look. I was I was it was I was on the faith high, mm, and I just knew because yeah. I. I, I, to this day, I, I know for a fact it was just supposed to happen. Yeah. So I ended up going and like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it. I don't know about everyone else's experience, but when I stepped on, like when I stepped, I was like, this doesn't feel, it, it was new, but it felt, I felt connected. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, 
this is home. Like this is <laughs> man, this is this is. I feel I feel like I was home. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm seeing people. You know, it's a tourist city, so you know you get that. But it was an interesting like little. Uh, I guess you can call it dichotomy. Uh, I mentioned it on my my, my my most recent stories. We were worshiping on the Sea of Galilee, bro, and it was crazy because like. You know, this is reading stories and the, the stories are coming to life right in front of your eyes. And so I'm worshiping, we're praising on a boat at that, you know. And next thing you know, somebody on a ski, a ski comes by. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> that wasn't happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, it's got it I remember moment. that passage. And I think, I, think, I think they were flexing a little bit too. Yeah. Like they was driving by us. I was like, come yeah, on, next man. Next one, yeah. Yeah. That's messed up. Yeah. Yeah. But but man, that trip like Israel Collective, man, shout out to Israel Collective. Um, they put together an amazing group, man. And like my group was just just very loving, and those are friendships I still talk to today, man. Yeah, like, who went uh, on your trip? Um, what's crazy is if I was to sit there and name people that the average bear would know, that wouldn't be the case. Because right. typically it's like a big social influencer, influencer thing. Yeah. And, you know, you got. But like for us, it was, you know, um, Anthony Evans was supposed to come, mm -hmm. but he didn't come. But a lot of people he invited did come. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I met my boy Cam, um, uh, people from Initiative as well, Monica. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kobe Koloff, you know, we had a yeah. great, great conversation there. She actually was a, a, a catalyst in um, my teary experience, man. I don't cry. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not a crier, man. Mm -hmm. So um, when her knowing like a lot about my background and stuff like that, literally every time I get with Kobe, it's just like, we end up talking. That's it's always one moment. Like before we leave, we're going to have a two hour conversation. <laughs> and that's just yeah. how it goes. And so, um, we end up talking, and then we're at the supposed uh, burial spot of of the Savior, right? Yeah. And so uh, they, I say supposed because like there is one spot where a lot of people call, and then this spot is like the spot is like more more historically proof proofing accurate. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like there's more proof behind that being historically more accurate spot than that. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, and I was just there, man, and and. Uh, not so much my worldview would challenge, but in the midst of, I'm asking, you know, I'm the type of person like, hey, who needs prayer? I'm, I'm raising my hand. I'm like, I need mm -hmm. prayer. And so I raised, I raised my hand and um, Colby came over and uh, I just prayed and, and she was just affirming me. I just felt like the the word she was saying was like, thus save the Lord. You know, and it just felt like, yo, you're going to be this. You're going to be this. People are telling you, you should be this. You are telling you should be this. The enemy's telling you we're going to be this. But God is saying they're going to be this, this, this. And I was like, yo, and it just broke, <laughs> broke me, man. Yeah. So, man, like I've, 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 I've cried more in the last two years than I have in the last 10. Mm. You know, and that's crazy because I'm like, dang, yo, I don't know. That's weird. <laughs> I've never been against crying. It's just, I don't you know. know. Just, I feel like my wills are broken, you know. <laughs> I'm like, man, what's going on? But. Um, Israel Collective was definitely something that um, allowed me to be encouraged. And that's their whole objective, like encourage the influencer to keep influencing and stuff. So for yeah. me, after the experience and during the experience, I think what was so dope to me uh, was while we had our tour guide, you know, our tour guide, our tour guide wasn't a, isn't a believer. He's, 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 he's Israeli, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And he's Hebrew. Follows the culture. No, not he's not a uh, orthodox all the way, but uh, he's just a real cool dude. You know what I'm saying? We sit down, you know, take us to spots. We drink some wine, all that good stuff. And um, his name is Yohaf. Yohaf. Shout and out Yohaf. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, you know Yohaf? No. Okay. Yohaf's good <laughs> man. Yohaf and our and our uh, uh, our, our driver Yakov. Yakov. <laughs> this is Jacob. But um. Yohav wasn't even like a Christian, but mm -hmm. he would do our tours. He would describe things to us. He was literally, and I'm like, man, this is so dope. Cause I'm literally, everyone knew every stop, we gonna stay an extra 30 minutes cause Mitch gonna ask questions. <laughs> and so I'm sitting there asking questions the entire time, taking notes, doing them. Da, da, da. Wait, so this happened in this? Okay, so Hebrew culture does this, this, this. And it was just an uh, overload of information, which to me, was paradise. Yeah. Mm. I'm like, man, information. I got so much information happening. And it's information that was tangible. Yeah. I don't have to say this is a concept. This is, 
You know what I'm saying? The land of milk and honey. Man, I didn't realize, yeah, they don't got no beehives out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're talking about dates probably, most likely. Yeah. Date sugar, because that's like honey. That's that's what they use as sweetener. That's what the honey means. So I'm like, dang, yo, I would have never assumed. Mm-hmm. Like, but I'm seeing all these date trees and these dates. I'm like, dang, yo, like it's really a lot of dates out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and so being able to tangibly reference things that I learned my entire life was just so surreal for me. So mm-hmm. yes, that nonprofit specifically oh, yeah. has a special place in my heart. Yeah. Shout out to Israel Collective. Yeah, yeah, they're awesome. And like I I'm just happy that you were able to articulate on that. Cause it's been when when was it that you went? But two years ago. Yeah. And so it's been a little bit, but still like I think as life returns back to normal, whatever that word is going to mean, um, and travel starts to be an option again, like I think it'll be something where people could be tempted or could just kind of continue along in the inertia of their life mm-hmm. and just stay in their little habits, stay in their little routines and not travel yeah. and, and not go into the unknown and not uh, get out of their comfort zone and, and, and seek the Lord in that. And so definitely just really appreciate you um, encouraging people in that and just sharing that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm planning on, never mind. Um, <laughs> so uh, speaking of another, you know, nonprofit uh, mm-hmm. behind every door. Absolutely. Um, gang, gang. Yeah, you know, I felt like we heard about it last on the last po- podcast with Alex. So yeah. Hey, um, good people, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. could you tell us a little bit what that is? Uh, you know, a little bit of your role there. You yeah, know, behind every door. And all that. So, uh, so I was with a, a well, once again another initiative. Shout out initiative is a dope nonprofit as well mm-hmm. that connect me with um, Israel Collective, and then is, initiative also connected me connected me with behind every door. We did a serve day there, which initiative is big on discipleship and one of the aspects of serving as well. So, we served at a impoverished community called Village Oaks, mm. um, Section Eight housing you know, um, everything that comes along with that and just, uh, a dope community though, man. So we were there doing hosting a basketball tournament. And so me and my boy beta, we, uh, um, we go early cause I'm like, Hey beta, man, let's just go early and make sure everything's straight. So we see glass on the court. We see all this stuff. And so we start cleaning up, you know, before the kids get there and stuff like that and making sure it's going to be nice. You know, then yeah. we left late. Because there were some kids that, that that we just wanted to tell the gospel to. And then some of the kids recognized me from camp because I worked at camp for like eight years. Yeah. You know, and so I was having a conversation. So fast forward, I go to another initiative event. While I'm at that event, dude walks up to us. It was Will Dowell, the owner of a, a Behind Every Day. He said, yo, we saw, we were watching. You didn't, I'm not sure you realized, we were watching and we saw like, how much you were loving the community. Hmm. And um, the Lord has been calling us to have two people come and live in the community. Um, and we're called to, you know what I'm saying? Like, we'll pay the rent for y'all if y'all just serve the community. You know what I'm saying? And then me and Beta were like, well, that's crazy because we've been looking for a place to stay. Hmm. Hey. So we ended up living there for two years. Me, Beta, and then my, my, my boy Dre South. Hmm. So we all move in. And we just stay there, love the community, and then just grew there, man. So I built the studio. Uh, Will said, hey, man, I want you to be used at your best capacity. What do you need from me? I said, B- Will, build me a studio. I kid you not, within two weeks, he had the funding. Yes. So within two weeks, we built the studio. Hmm. And then I had a podcast for the kids. I was recording the younger kids, um, recording my own music. I had a place to do that for myself. And it was just a dope experience. And then there was a used to be a garden on the outside. And they were like, yo, like, who's going to take care of the garden? I was like, I'll do it. I'm <laughs> vegan. Can't be that different. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Next thing I'm growing tomatoes. You know what I'm saying? Amateur farmer. There's an Instagram hey, bio. You know, you know, <laughs> now all the tomatoes made it. Let's just say that. But we, we try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next season, I was better. There we go. But, um, but yeah, so just being able to teach the kids and principles of, of life and letting them being able to tangibly see the actual scientific and quantum physician uh, facts of speaking life into material things shifts them, you know, and, and being able to say, if you speak positively to this plant, it will grow. If you speak negatively to it, it'll die. 
This is just actual facts, you know. And based on those facts, they knew that they couldn't step into the garden if I was like, hey, what's the rule? No negativity. So they, I was like, why? If we talk negatively to plants, they'll die. I said, what's that? Why is that important? Because it relates to us. And if we talk negative to each other, we hurt each other. Go ahead and go in there. There we and go. go. They run in there and say, I love you. They're going to take it to the extreme. Yeah. You know? but it was, I was like, hey, you know, words of affirmation, words of affirmation. Yeah. You know, my plant's going to grow. <laughs> you know, and we did that, made some stew out of the stuff we made at the end of the season, stuff like that. So it was dope. Um, so, yeah, man, Behind Every Door allowed me to um, really, really live out my name, Street Hymns, doing hymns mm. for the streets because streets need him. So it was a dope experience, man, those two years. Um, and, I, I mean, I, I, at times I miss it because it was just in the midst of the struggle, in the midst of the, 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 the paycheck to paycheck lifestyle, in the midst of the, the, the conflict, in the midst of the... Man, the wars. I'm talking about, I literally was in drive-bys. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm ducking for my life on a prayer walk. Mm. You know, I'm literally having to break up fights and my neighbors getting robbed right across from us um, at gunpoint. He's getting taken out of his apartment because, you know what I'm saying, something else happened on this end. And mm. I'm seeing crackheads walking by or stepping over needles. I'm like, and I'm literally, this is the lifestyle I'm living. I became numb to the sound of uh, ambulances, literally. I'm talking about, like, I heard them so much. I remember I was in public, just walking with my friends one day, and I'm like, man, I, I don't know why this stuck out, but they were like, man, you know, this, that ambulance was very loud. It was loud. I was like, what? It's like the ambulance just drove by. I was like, maybe I wasn't focusing, but I, can't, I didn't even notice it. Because mm. we literally heard the ambulance three yeah. times a day. At night, actually, three times a night. And it's like, after that, because either it's a shooting, and so the police got to pull up, or it's just, you know what I'm saying? Whatever it may yeah. be, somebody's always calling the ambulance. So it's just a regular thing. They're going to shut down a block. And, and da, da. So for me, I'm like, dag, yo, Lord, like, in the midst of all that, that was a, that was a humbling experience. Because... Mm-hmm. That was when the Lord was saying, tend my flock, mm, you know? Yeah. And so I, was, I got to tend the flock, man. It was dope. So behind every door, providing me an opportunity, man. Mm. They did their best job to make sure we felt safe and were protected. So, um, you know, in the aspect of, like, make sure our physical endangerment wasn't wasn't an issue. So, man, I, I, I appreciate them for that for sure, man. Like, that was yeah. a dope experience. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll just say I love seeing your heart in that and being – involved genuinely in the community and and just being there so you can understand things in a way through your own eyes. Yeah. Something that, um, one of my favorite books that I've read, uh, recently is, uh, the road to Wigan pier by George Orwell. And I'm not sure if you've read it before, but essentially in the first half of the book, he goes up to the Northern part of the United kingdom and lives life with, uh, the coal miners up there and just does life with them and just describes their working conditions their living conditions their family conditions, everything like that in the first half of the book. And it's something that it really hit me, the level of commitment that he had yeah. to his, in that case, his, his um, mission to write the book, but that there are a certain number of people out in the world that God that God is placed in these communities to really just be involved mm-hmm. and be committed and serve them. And it's just, I don't know. I'm just always mm-hmm. inspired whenever I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's a <clears throat> that's crazy. You know, that's crazy, you know, to be in. So in, you know, in the ministry that, that you're, you're experiencing those type of things. Right. Um, but you're still there for, you know, our great cause. And I, and I think about, um, there's a guy that I went to school with. He was in the news a couple of years ago. Maybe you guys heard of it. Um, he actually died trying to go to preach the gospel in, a, in an island. Mm-hmm. You know, he had uh, some of the locals there trying to take him to the island. And, you know, I think they hit him with a spear or an arrow or something like that. You yeah. know, for him, he has such a conviction to go um, like, to your point of the duty you just mentioned um, for the call, right? For that call. And um, it's, it's easy to have comfort in here. 
Yeah. Right? In, in wow. America. But, um, yeah. you know, I feel like every every podcast, you know, I'm kind of known for these um, serious questions that I got to ask just because, you know, knowing you and, and, and for those that are probably listening, uh, Chase is like, what's going on? It's not in the, it's not in the outline. Yeah. That, yeah, he's like, what's he about to ask? It's not the outline. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's going to get us fired. No. Um, so, yeah, my question is... Um, can there be communion, you know, like relationship, fellowship between Christians where somebody's a vegan and the other one's not? Because I know you're like a big time vegan. So yeah. it's, a, it's what, not a serious what does that question. Look like? It's a joke question. Can, can there be genuine communion between vegans and non-vegans that are believers? Like the actual bread and wine? Or? What do you mean? Uh, however you want to interpret that. No, 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 do you actually like when you when you come like to the, the New Deal stuff and like we cook? Do you actually eat the vegan stuff? So I remember one time I w- they had a vegan thing Friendsgiving. I'm like, what is that? And I showed up and I ate the food and I was confused because it tastes like the food, but I knew it wasn't the food. So yeah, I ate, it was good, but I was just surprised. Communion, you know. There we go. There we go. Living proof. Que- <laughs> quite, uh, question answered. Right hey, look, look, look. <laughs> that just shows you there can be communion mm-hmm. where there is confusion. As long as you don't know what's good, mm. you can experience it. Feel me? There we go. But we gotta mask it. We gotta we gotta put the veil over it first. Mm. You feel me? That's, that's there was a time I was very angry. I'm, I left the group. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were at Anthony's house and they had the uh, cauliflower barbecue okay, chicken. Okay, no, no, no. I, I don't condone that message. Yo. <laughs> Look. Look! Look! Just because you put sauce on a on a Yo. plant, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should then call it wings or call Yo. it ribs. I'm like, hey man, Bro, you know. these were barbecue <laughs> cauliflower. That was supposed to be chicken wings. I ate it. I said, huh? <laughs> this don't the, taste like no chicken. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was like, no, it's cauliflower scene. drenched in sauce. Now I love it. I love the taste. But yeah. When you advertise it that way for yeah. somebody, it's like, oh, chicken. Well, you know, this was good. I had a Beyond Burger before. This has got to be. Oh, this is literally just cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, indeed, it yeah. was different. Yeah. But. I didn't know. I didn't know that was why you left the group. But you know, no, 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 no. At least no, I had no. peace. I had no, peace. No, no, <laughs> no. That was, that was great. That was great. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, so kind of wrapping things up here. Wanted to give you the opportunity to uh, talk about or hint at your uh, upcoming project. That you have Absolutely. and just kind of share whatever you want to about that. Yeah, man. Um, I'll talk about it for sure, man. So I'm working on a project called Happy Holidays, um, ending with a question mark. Um, that's not the full title. It's like it's Happy Holidays question mark. Um, and for me, I was in a low place last year during the holidays. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there was brokenness within my family. It was brokenness within me. Um, I was, you know, around that time, literally, man, like. I ended up losing my job at the at the at the, at the center. You know what I'm saying? Not because I didn't get fired, not because anything. It's because gentrification happened, and they were looking for ways to get rid of me and my roommates. And they they were they they were successful in you know what I'm saying in their attempts. And so I'm literally back and we're living with my mom, you know. And I'm sitting there like, yo, like man, I'm supposed to be, you know, street hymns. I'm mm-hmm. supposed to be out there touring and people asking me. Like, I remember I was working a job, man. I was I was. Uh, uh, what was it? Rest of restoration hardware, filling in uh, furniture for people, man. And I'm grinding and stuff like that. And one dude was like, "You recognize me?" He said, "Wait, bro, you're Street Hills." I was like, "Yeah." Da, da, da. We, we start. He start talking something like that. He's like, "Yeah, man. You know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know this dude." Da, da, da. He's like, "I was like, man. You know, I'll beat that dude." He's like, "No, nah, no, nah, you ain't beat him, bro." We mm. talking about rapping and stuff like that. I was like, "Man, like, I, f- I feel like I'm a better lyricist than that dude." He's like, "Man, you a better lyricist than him." Then why are you over here with me? Mm, <laughs> it was like, uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I am kind of packing boxes right yeah. now. You know, it was fu- it was a funny, like humbling experience over there too. But um, but yeah, man, you know, end up then I end up working literally as I'm writing a project. I'm, I'm I end up doing a temporary job at Samaritan's Purse, shipping mm. boxes there. 
Because like I'm like, man, like I'm applying for job to job after job after job. I'm applying to be a youth pastor. I'm applying to be all these things. I'm like, yo, like whatever advice anybody's giving me, oh, you should do this, you're good at this, you just I'm trying everything. I'm like, Lord, like mm-hmm. wherever I land, I'm, I'm about to I'm about to go hard in, you know what I'm saying? So just let me know. So I ended up working in Samaritan's purse. I just felt so, I felt so empty, man. And I'm like, man, I loved it. I love, I love like the the that nonprofit as well. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They do good work. I just felt like, man, at the time, I was just like, Lord, like, it's gotta be more, you know, like, like, like not more in the aspect of life. Like I wasn't content in what I had. It's just like, Lord, like I know you've called me for more. And so as I sat there, I'm like, man, you know what? I'm in the low point of my life right now. And like, I just felt like I was on autopilot. A spiritual autopilot is a weird place, man. Mm-hmm. You know, you know the right things to say. You know how to operate. You know how to respond. You know how to how to talk. And but inside, you're like, this ain't it, man. This ain't this ain't how I'm supposed to be. You know, what I'm saying operating in my heart. You know, so uh, I was encouraged to create in that moment. And in the midst of my creation, I'm, I'm sitting there writing songs about loneliness, writing songs about rejection, writing songs about uh, um, not feeling like this is the same type of experience I knew when I was younger, you know, and sadness, depression, suicide. And as I'm creating this, it's a Christmas album. I'm like, dang, yo, this is a seasonal thing, you know? And, uh, you know, there's a rumor people talk about, you know, this is the most depressing time of the year, mm-hmm. most suicide rates skyrocket, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and there's, not, there's not too much actual statistical legitimacy behind that, but just the sentiment of, like, people understanding that, yo, pain is amplified during this time because joy is amplified. You know, it's like so much joy and stuff like that. It's like, I'm not that joyous. So mm-hmm. now where does that leave me? And everyone around me is happy. Man, I'm, I'm going to go seclude myself most likely. And the people you invite that really do need to be in the friends giving and the people you need to invite that really do want to, it's like they don't even have strength to go out, you know? And so I was like, man, like, I want to be able to create in this moment. And so I tend to flock, you know? I was like, man, let me let me create. And so I just created a Christmas project. That was last year. And then sure enough, in the midst of, in the, in the, in the tis the season, I wasn't even able to put it out because, like, mm-hmm. the, en- the, the issues with, like, the, how the engineering was going and just, like, the production and stuff. was just like, yo, like, by the time I got all my beats, by the time I got all the mi- – it was just, like, December 25th. I'm like, man, yeah. I can't release the project on Christmas, full-length project. So I was like, man, you know, I'll couch it till next year. And so here we are this year. And so yep. um, finally in a place where I can release it. And – the timing doesn't feel anything better than, than perfect. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's been a struggle to get everything together. You know, redeeming the tracks that you started on last year, it's tough. But everything fell in place so nicely. And like, I'm literally getting mixes back as we're in as we're in this. <laughs> and I'm like, dang, yo, like, like, I can't wait till this project is done. But I feel like this project is important for me. I don't want to say important for everybody else. I don't, can't speak. It's important for me because it allowed me to find a, a solace through creation in my sadness, in my loneliness, in my anxious mind or whatever it may be, or anxious state. I don't think I, I don't think I have anxiety, but I had anxious moments. I don't think I have depression, but I was depressed. You know what I'm saying? So it was just it was just those things. I'm like, man, like Lord, meet me here and and help me to communicate this pain in a way that somebody is able to empathize. You know, I don't think the I don't think the job is always to have the answer. Yeah. Or give the answer. I think it's just to say, oh, I hurt too. And then through that, develop relationship, through relationship, consistency, consistency, change. Mm, so yeah. um yeah, man. So so I'm excited for this project because I really like it, it came from such a painful place, man. You know, yeah. so I'm just like, yo, like like all my best projects are coming from pain, yeah. you know? And I'm like, man, like, Lord, like, okay, you know, I guess I'm a good little, I feel like a test dummy sometimes, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I love, I love, I love what I'm doing in the midst of all this. Yeah. And 
I I look at the scriptures. I'm like, man, you've been doing this. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so. yeah I think it it'll be cool. good because our boy Montel, he uh, he kind of says the same thing. Where so often we create things on the other side of trouble or struggles, but nothing like ever in the moment. Mm. And so it'll be something where yeah, it'll be beautiful to see like what God does with that. So yeah, man, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, think of it, bro. Think yeah. of it. That'll be good. So it's it's been a it's, it's been a dope thing, man, to add those tracks into there, man. So um shout out to Lone Star, shout out to um Donnie Domino, shout out to Newbie Mac, um doing an executive engineering, shout out to Jay Smooth, more product another producer, all the features on the project. I'm excited because this is just like this is technically my first Street Hymns project as I changed my name back to Street Hymns. Mm-hmm. Um so this is going to be dope, you know, in, 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 in the spirit of the season, preparing for my next season, you know, of release and music and labels, you know, all that <laughs> stuff, you know? So, uh, yeah, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Well, you got off a little easy with the name stuff. Mm. We didn't really get to that, uh, but, but you know, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's one thirty in the morning right now. Yeah. You're, hey, man, you're a trooper. We, we, we fighting through it, man. Yeah. We fighting through it. I'm uh, yeah. getting up. Yeah, Joshua, you have anything? Last things you want to add, man? I just want to clarify one thing you said. I did not leave New Deal. Uh, the drive, <laughs> <laughs> the it drive, was a joke. Yeah, it was a the joke. drive is just a little. Uh, uh, it's just a little bit of a drive at times. Yeah, so, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. but I will show up. I show up like once a year. You yeah, know, yeah. It was great. We randomly face. saw each other in uh, where was it at? At um, um, it was a coffee shop off a of grapevine. Um, oh, redefine. Uh, redefine, yeah. redefine, yeah. That's yeah. A, that's 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 probably my favorite coffee spot right now. That's yeah. a dope, it's a dope spot. Yeah, but it was, it was, I was in there and I ended up talking about the manga I was writing. Yeah, I got to talk to you about something after this. But okay, it's um, it's 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 yeah, man. Um, so usually this is my time to kind of you know talk about the people that that came on here. Um, as as I mentioned before, man. I mean, it was so it was great, kind of just coming into that um, small group setting and seeing you know the leadership, the structure that you guys had set. And just how it was impacting people. I mean, we were starting Bible study at 10 p.m. <laughs> and going until like 2 a.m. Late night, boys. Late night. Because you we fellowship before, yeah. man. Yeah. And that was yeah. one, that was, I feel like, was like one of the most important processes. Because like, when you do Bible study, I don't think it should just be like, hey, one person talks in a circle, and then you mm-hmm. should listen. Like, you get that in school. You get yeah. that, you get that on, you get that online. You get that in the podcast. You get that on TV. I'm like, bro, like. Let's actually commune. Mm-hmm. Let's fellowship. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we laugh about it all the time. It's like, oh, we don't know when Bob so they can start. Yeah. It's like, what's funny is it started the moment we walked in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's really the model that I kind of took away from that. It was always something that I try to implement in the Bible studies that I, you know, led and was a part of and different things like mm-hmm. that. But that's dope. That's dope. Um, Praise but God. man, yeah. I mean, just having such a big influence, not just on myself, but on so many believers, you know, that have followed you through this journey, uh, throughout this journey, and just all that God has placed in your life and all the doors is going to continue to place. Um, you know, I mean, it's it, I'm always impressed by people that I feel like know so much, right? Because cause I'm always at a place where I'm like, oh, I know, I, I know something. And I'm like, oh, man, I got knows a lot. You know, whenever <laughs> people start talking about but in the Hebrew, I'm like, oh, okay, tell, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, that's, that's me. I'm like, over oh, tell me because I need to know. That's crazy. Uh, but man, I mean, it's, it's always just a joy and a pleasure. Um, and we've, we've been talking about getting on here for like over a year now. You know, you're one of the first people I brought up. That's pretty cool, know, man. To, yeah. That's pretty cool. To come. So I'm glad we we're able to finally get you here. This is the latest we've ever done a uh, podcast. But <laughs> yeah, this would have happened last yeah. year. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I would have been back at Samaritan's first without, you know what I'm saying, full energy. That is on 12 hour shifts. So I would yeah. not have been ready. Um, but bro, I will say this much, man. When, when, I kid you not. I kid you not. Every time you show up, me mm. and Dre would like do like a little sinister look at each other, like, bro, it's gonna be a good one today. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro, a joke. Like it, it it was always the moment of like, like literally you see a bunch of organized chaos, people yeah. just talking for debates, and then next you know, Joe Sway was speaking, and everybody was like, Oh yeah, it was crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> he it don't talk a crazy. lot. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. what he does, yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be lengthy, but yeah. it's gonna oh, be yeah. powerful. So we sat there like Jose speaking. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> take a seat. <laughs> bro. 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 Yeah, I know. It was always crazy, man. Yeah. Yeah. So good. But yeah, that's me. That's me. Yeah. Do you have any last things you want to share? 
Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to go into it too much, but um, I am starting my own nonprofit called Street Hymns Recordings, basically mm-hmm. implementing me going into um, juvenile detention center systems and teaching hip hop. And then afterwards, you know what I'm saying, instead of being a Band-Aid, being a, a, a continued healing process, meeting them outside of the detention center and offering them free recording. Uh, free music videos, free artist management, um, literally having the full gambit of what it means to be an artist and also mandatory counseling and therapy um, for the artist there by contingencies of, you know, working um, and also uh, volunteering and being involved in the community and giving as well. So, this is just a, 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 a five tier, you know what I'm saying, media management company and media in general label, basically, um, in which all the proceeds go directly, you know what I'm saying, to the youth and they'll be able to monetize and be business owners and of themselves, you know what I'm saying? So um, Streams Recordings is something I've been passionate about, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the last two years or so, just by doing it, or last year and a half, I say. Um, by doing it myself and then having people say, man, I, I want to support this. I'm like, man, okay, cool. Maybe I need to make a nonprofit because I'm mm-hmm. getting tired. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a lot of work for one person. So yeah, um, that's coming and uh, it'll be released within the next year and I'm excited for that. So, you know, being on a podcast that amplifies nonprofits, highlights nonprofits and connects nonprofits. Um, this is a little, you know what I'm saying? A little, little not Amber Alert was the thing, a little <laughs> siren. <laughs> hey, if you hear this and you're like, oh, snap, that sounds yeah. pretty dope, man. Like, like you got to collab. Like, I'm, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to hear. I think what the Lord will teach me in this next season is what it means to create a board, what it means to, you know what I'm saying, hire staff and what it means to, you know what I'm saying, uh, see things through. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited. Um, and, yeah, that's about it, man. Yeah. yeah, love it. Well, thank you so much for carving the time out. We know you're a busy guy in album mode right now and all oh, that. Oh, yeah, album mode. Caught me right off work and everything, man, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. So we'll uh, we'll link everything down in the, bu- in the description. Absolutely. For all your information, for social media handles, websites, everything like that. Um, but yeah, that'll be a wrap for us today. Thank you all so much for tuning in. As Josh always said, subscribe, review, rating, everything like that. Until next time, much love and God bless. Peace.